Evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drugs Milan Unboxing. Please hit the subscribe button on the bottom of the screen. Morweni manene na manene kazi, si sonke, si temba o kuba u notlaka u simpiwe chain reaction kontro, a pumelele ngolwe si shlanu, a tate inchinga ye shlavati, ka waneng menajoten e chonburi Thailand. We in South Africa have got big hopes for Simpiwe uh, Chain Reaction Kongto to become the new WBC World Strawweight Champion when he takes on the long reigning unbeaten champion Waneng Menahyoten in Chonburi, Thailand on Friday at noon in the sweltering heat. Now, this is a tough task. It's tough to win on the road, uh, uh, especially in Thailand. That's not the easiest place to do it. But uh, simply where Kongto can take heart in the fact that history will be on his side. Uh, towards my right shoulder, you'll see the picture of a guy by the name of Zolani Petelo. In 1997, he journeyed to Thailand and as a complete underdog upended long reigning uh, IBF strawweight champion Ratanapol Sorvorapen, knocking him out in four rounds. And he's not the only one. Uh, Vusi Malinga also went to Thailand and won a WBC. Uh, bantamweight uh, world title eliminator beating the ex-WBC champ Vera Paul Saprom also in Thailand in four rounds. That seems to be a magic number. Now long reigning WBA featherweight champion Chris John. He's not a Thai, he's Indonesian, but uh, his long reign also came to a sticky end uh, against a South African fighting on the road uh, by the name of Simpiwe Techeka. So it has happened before and there is historical precedent for Simpiwe Kongto to be successful in Thailand. But now, uh, who exactly is wanting Mena Yoten? Now, okay, Mena Yoten, I did some homework on him, watched a lot of tape on him. He started fighting professionally at the tender age of 13 when he started uh, fighting Muay Thai to support his family. And uh, he was uh, a Muay Thai champion in Lumpini Stadium. Now that's a stadium in, 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 in Thailand where huge um, uh, crowds of people congregate to watch the Muay Thai fighters often in front of a king of Thailand. So if you're a champion there, uh, then you're a card-carrying tough guy. Be that as it may, he became a boxer and he ran his record to 53 and oh, incredible unbeaten run, the longest unbeaten run of any active fighter today. Now, if I watch Benayotin, and watch his fights, then I wonder how did he manage to get to 53 and 0. Now the reason why I say this is because all these fighters who retired unbeaten or had these long unbeaten runs before they got beaten, talking about Rocky Marciano, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, Ricardo Pinito Lopez and so on, they all had that special look, you know, they have next level skills or crippling power or both. And if I look at Mena Yoten, he doesn't have that. He, in fact, he looks like your typical uh, converted Muay Thai fighter. Now, he does, he, I must say that his stance isn't as square as some, some of them, so he's done that uh, right. But he walks in on you and he keeps his hands and his arms up in the sort of a wide but high guard, kind of like that. He walks at you like that. And he, he doesn't jab. He doesn't have a normal boxing rhythm. He does, his jab is almost non-existent. He throws lead right and uh, lead left hooks. I think his right hand, uh, he sort of puts his weight about, uh, uh, behind it. It's a quick, unexpected right hand. That's his money punch. And the uh, only time he jabs is if he throws a quick uh, double jab when he can't land the lead right or he can't uh, manage to set up the lead right by using those sweeping left hooks to move his opponent into it. So how, how did he uh, uh, get to that mark? I think his biggest asset is that he is incredibly tough. Um, he's never been knocked down as far as I could ascertain. He, uh, he's, he's never been even looked bothered by his opponent's punches. He just keeps coming at you and he keeps landing his shots. So the rounds will, will be close. And when, you, when, when you're fighting in your backyard, the close rounds go, usually goes to the home fighter. Also, uh, he likes the rough stuff in the clinches. Here you can see the Muay Thai background coming in again. He likes to uh, uh, grip you by the arms, drag you down, headlock you, push your elbow in against the joint. Uh, he's also quite liberal with his head in his opponent's face. He likes that rough stuff too. So 
his toughness combined with his unconventional uh, style and also is that gives you an unconventional rhythm you know it's hard to time when he's going to do what even though his offense is predictable and i think that's what got him that far because even if you fight at home with all the advantages and even if you didn't face a murderous row of opponents his counterpart the wba champion knockout cp fresh Mart, the funny names in thailand eh? uh they get kept apart by rival promoters but he has fought some decent guys, you know, he won the world title, the WBC title in 2014 against uh, Osvaldo Navoa. He's made 11 successful defenses, in February will be his 12th. Um, and he's beaten the current IBF champion, Pedro Taduran. But even, even if he didn't really face his, his big rival in Fresh Mart or a guy that's very rugged like Byron Roas, um, he has managed to keep winning, so he must do something right. now. If I look at his fight in 2017 against Melbourne, Jerusalem, uh, a, a well-known Filipino, Jerusalem's jab worked all the time. He could manage his, to land his power shots. He was on his toes. He basically outboxed uh, 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 Menayotin, but Menayotin kept landing a few shots. And then they gave uh, Jerusalem a very harsh point deduction for one uh, blow at the top of a border. And he squeezed over for one point. So that's the difficulty about fighting in Thailand and uh, what about simply where Kongtok? Now records tend to deceive. We have 53 and Owen Menayotin. Now simply where Kongtok has got a rather mundane, not so glossy 19 and 5 record with 7 knockouts. Now that his record is deceiving is better than his record indicates. Uh, a lot of his losses were in the beginning of his career. He had sort of an in and out start to his career, win some, lose some. Then he won the South African title and then he kept learning on the job and getting better and better. And since then, his only loss uh, has been in his first world title challenge, a spirited fight against uh, his countryman and now also his stablemate, uh, Eki Butler, for the WBA title. And he gave Butler everything he could handle, and he lost an action packed, uh, close decision. But since then, that showed that he belongs in world level. He's gone from strength to strength, recorded decent wins against the likes of former IBF champion, of course, Inati Joy. Uh, former world title uh, challenger Toto Landero. Now, style wise, Simpiwe Kongtok can, can, can do a bit of both. Uh, he can box behind the jab beautifully when he wants to, but he can also get into the trenches and dig and slug it out. He can do both of those things. Um, and then, if I look at his, his, his last two fights, which was in 2018 against Toto Landero and Joey Kanoi, those fights showed us. The best of Simpiwe Konto as well as the worst of Simpiwe Konto. Against Toto Landero, he boxed very well, was winning the fight easily when he was behind his jab. And then for some rounds, he started slugging it out and getting on the inside. And I thought, even though he won on points, he made the fight a bit harder than it needed to be. And his last fight in December was against Joey Kanoi, sort of a wild swinging but very dangerous Filipino fighter. He was, he, was, he was winning well enough, but then he stayed in the, in the pocket too, too long in the second round. Kanoi tagged him with a left hook. He went down heavily. He survived the storm and uh, then a clash of heads uh, when he was starting to fight back opened up a cut, very nasty cut and they stopped the fight with four rounds not completed. It became a no contest. So that was the up and down of Simpiwe Kongtro in a synopsis of two fights. Now, sometimes I think... Uh, he, he, he struggles to figure what style he wants to fight. Uh, he can box very well, but then he suddenly changes and, and gets involved in the tier up. I, I, I don't know why that is. Maybe it is his fighter's identity. It's what he's comfortable with. Sometimes a fighter has a sort of a brawler's identity, even though he can box very well. I think that was Tommy Hearns as well in the day. And when he's under pressure, he reverts to, to this brawling sort of style. Uh, so that's simply where Conto. Uh, he can be hit, he can be hurt, but he does have a good jab. He has got solid all-round boxing skills. He's got a great uh, double left hook to the body in the Mexican style. And uh, he's got as good a chance as any strawweight out there in the world to end the long reign of wanting Menayotin. Because it could be that he's, 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 he's getting Menayotin at just the right time. Because even though Menayotin is, is only 33, all those fights with time boxing, he must be having some wear and tear on his body. And it could be that uh, Contour is just at the right time, at the right place to catch, catch Menayotin. 
But on the other hand, we've got this big elephant in the room. How do you win a points decision in Thailand? Well, the first answer is don't let it go to points. Stop a guy like uh, Zolani Petalo over here did against Sorvorapin and Busi Malinga did and Simpewe Chaka did against Chris John. But if I, if, and how do you stop a Thai fighter? Now, you, you, they are very tough. These ex Muay Thai fighters have become boxers. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're going to stop him by, by, by just hitting him and nailing him on the chin. Now, Simpiwe has got respectable power, but not so much that he can depend on it to win the fight or get himself out of trouble. So the next best thing is go to the body. So he needs to go to Menayotin's body, and maybe that is just a chink in the armor that can sink Menayotin. But he will have to be very circumspect about how he goes to the body. Because if he gets involved in a mauling affair and, and clinch a start where Menayotin is going to twist his arms, get him in a headlock, then I can see the fight ending on a headbutt or an injury and going to a technical decision like a couple of Menayotin's fights did. So he's going to have to be circumspect about how he does that. We know how Manayotin is going to fight. So I think Simpiwe Kwonkos should stay behind his jab, double up with it. Why not? Because he's going to hit Manayotin with a jab. You can't miss him with it. Throw in the straight rights and then move away from Manayotin's right. That's the danger punch. He needs to move away from Manayotin's right hand. But he also needs to keep in mind that if he moves away from the right hand, the left hook is going to come sweeping in from the other side. So he's got to keep his right hand glued to the side of his face and also lower his level, dip underneath so that the left hook can go over him. And then uh, Menayotin has got the hands here, so it's sometimes hard to reach a body. I would faint with, with, with looping shots around the gloves, make Menayotin pick up his elbows and then dip, go in low, bang the body, step around him, make him turn, keep away from those clinches. That's where Menayotin is going to get away with a lot of stuff. Now, if Simpiwek Pongtro can do that, uh, then we've got to hope. Uh, the only thing is, if he was fighting in Japan, where it's, it's one of the few places you can win a close decision on the road, I would give Simpiwek a 50-50 chance, perhaps more than a 50-50 chance of upsetting Menayotin. But he's fighting in Thailand, so unless the body shots work and stops Menayotin, he's going to have to win eight clear rounds there to get the decision. Now, the one thing that struggled, I, I, I know Simpiwe Konto, he's a great chap, I've met him several times uh, up there at Hotbox Gym in Joburg, also at Heki's ring belt ceremony, and I really, really want him to win, you know, but now I've got to try and stay objective and call the fight like I see it, and uh, there's two things that worries me about Simpiwe Konto, he's, he's sort of erratic form in his last two fights in 2018, and this will be his First fight in 2019, they had all hell to get Menayotin in the ring with him, and that led to a lot of inactivity. I can only hope that the sparring you'll get at Hotbox Gym, which features Heki Butler, IBF Flyweight Champion Muruti Mutalane, and a slew of other fighters, would counteract that inactivity. But that sort of erraticness in his form, um, the inactivity, that makes me worry a little bit that he's grown ripe on the vine. I hope I'm wrong. So. In the end, I'm sure Simpiwe Konto is going to have a lot of success with the things that I've described. I'm sure he's going to fight well. I'm sure he's, 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 he's going to have a lot of success against Menayotin. But Menayotin will also get his shots in. And uh, because of his funny rhythm, he might catch Simpiwe at some point uh, scoring a flash knockdown. And the fight, some of those rounds are going to be close. So I think in the end, uh, Menayotin is going to hang on to his title with a one-point or a two-point margin, probably, very very probably in a controversial fashion, but I hope I'm wrong and I hope Simpiwe uh, brings the title home. So, Desi Bonane, Pakamisani is Andla.